Welcome to our ninth More Gem show. Uh, I'm Steve Morier, your host, and with me tonight are my son, Michael, who's in charge of this production, and I think he got it almost on time today. Um, <laughs> and uh, my eldest son, Jeffrey, who's our moderating our chat. Hello, Jeffrey. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> After uh, We had to quarantine issues. him. Huh? Yeah. We had to quarantine him. Or after Michael's issues last week, he asked for uh, some help from his big brother to come back. So I made my way back here to uh, make sure everything goes smoothly tonight. Thank you, Jeffrey, for mm -hmm. coming back. Um, so tonight uh, we're kind of having a best of show. Uh, we've had uh, eight previous shows, and uh, I pulled out... Uh, about two thirds of the show tonight are, are stones that have already been on shows, um, but uh, we brought them back because they were stones I had enough margin in to offer a little more off. Uh, great stones, and tonight we're with the uh, coupon code BEST20, we're given 20 off. Uh, many of these stones were 15% off in previous shows. And if you know us, know us, we typically are not big discounters. Uh, we put our prices online to be competitive worldwide. So, so taking uh, this 20% off is a significant discount for, for what we normally do. Um, so um, let's get on with it. Uh, Jeffrey, anything, any um, news you got? Yeah, well, you know, also, you know, I guess to compliment Michael, um, he was in the in-store magazine. We yep. have that image or yep. magazine. There you go. So th this is in-store magazine is, is one of our, our major uh, publications for the jewelry industry. And, and uh, actually, Michael here got in it. And what was it for? Yeah, so we did a highlight Opal video, and it's been viewed four million times. At least. Where at? Yeah. On our YouTube channel. On, on our YouTube channel, and it also went viral on, on Reddit, um, which we've talked about before. Uh, we've done a couple of highlight Opal videos, and, and on Reddit, they both went viral. Yep. So it's kind of cool stuff. Uh, you won't see one of those tonight, but uh, um, we still do have a few. That material is completely gone from the mining area. Uh, we still have a few to cut, and, and uh, they've sold well for us and just been an interesting addition to, to our gem collection. So uh, I guess we'll get started. Uh, we're going to start with a... Uh, oh, you want to talk about the sand sites that were found? Oh, some more news. Um, a really... Uh, some major pieces of tanzanite were recently found in Tanzania. Um, here's a picture of it. Uh, this gentleman, Mr. Lizer, he's 52. He found uh, these two big crystals. Uh, the two crystals weigh 15 kilograms total. Um, the largest previous to this was 3.3 kilograms. So these are huge pieces. Um, he received seven 0.7 billion Tanzanian shillings, uh, which in U.S. dollars is 3.4 million dollars. So it's going to help him because he's got four wives and 30 children, so he's going to need that money. <laughs> wow. 
congratulations to him. That's an exciting find. Uh, really neat crystals. I don't know how much of its cutting material. Uh, looked pretty nice on the inside. When you get that big, the, the, they just look very, very dark. So um, tough to tell from the pictures. But uh, if, uh, if it'll cut some major gems, love to see some large pieces. I think the largest tanzanite I've seen cut has been about 500 carats. There may have been larger, but that's the largest I've had a chance to, to buy, which I didn't. Uh, was quite a bit of money. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with those, whether they just keep them as specimens or actually cut them up. So we'll see in the future. So did, did he just find them, or is he a miner? Or do uh, know? He's an artisanal miner, so I, I think it was a group. I, I'm not exactly sure the whole story. Yeah. You know, hard to get the full information. You know, nobody's traveling over there, so, so I haven't really uh, got a, a full story on it, which I'm sure we'll get more information in, in the near future because it, it's only been a few weeks since, since this discovery. Um, so hopefully when we get back there, if we hopefully this year sometime, um, we'll learn more and maybe see these pieces. You know, pretty extraordinary. So our, our first stone up tonight, uh, you've seen before. This is a, a Sphene. Uh, Sphene is a really extraordinary gem because of its high dispersion. You know, when you look at the picture, you can see the different colors coming out of it. And dispersion is what diamond does really well. Um, but Sphene blows diamond away as far as dispersion. Um, we, oh, you got the, oh. oh, sorry, Michael's falling asleep at the wheel here. Already. Yeah. So, so this Sphene, uh, you can see all the different colors and dispersion is just a breakup of white light into spectral colors. And, um, it's just a gemological characteristic of, of, uh, all, many gems have dispersion, but, but few, display it with with the amount of dispersion that Sphene does. So this particular stone uh, weighs 16.83 carats. So, so it's a really large stone. This I bought my last trip to Madagascar, which actually was quite a few years ago. It was 2008. Um, so it, it's... Uh, it's been around a while, but I haven't had it on the market since then. So just recently we put it on the market. Um, so this particular stone with 20% off, it's still $6,056. But for a stone this size and the kind of rarity this has, it's really an inexpensive stone because many spheens that are two, three carat size bring this kind of money. So um, really extraordinary stone, extraordinary size and uh, just make a beautiful pendant not really suitable for rings but it'd make an extraordinary pendant one that everybody will see because of that beautiful color and strong dispersion comes from madagascar uh, north north of uh, north part of madagascar or did i don't know if there's any production currently And up next uh, is an opal. Um, this particular opal is faceted. And it just really has some extraordinary colors. You know, the bands that you see are not typical for opal to, to display such long bands of color across it. You know, and this particular piece, all sides of it, are fully colorful. You know the this that pattern you see from this direction, uh, we call it honeycomb. You know honeycomb is is I mean when you look look in each of those cells, you can just see how the color just lights up when you when you catch the cell. <clears throat> the honeycomb pattern produces some of the brightest, most vivid colors in any opal. And, and this honeycomb is, you know, these, these tubes kind of run the length of it, and you're seeing the sides of the tubes here. Now, it used to be that Gilson synthetics, this is how we identified them. This was called snakeskin, and these were columns, and we'd have said in the past that this, it's a synthetic Gilson opal, but this is a natural opal from Ethiopia. You know, this one I faceted, you know, the faceting doesn't do a whole lot other than makes it look unique. 
you know, faceted opals I've done really well with. It's been my best sellers. And, you know, I, I look at every opal and think, can I facet this? And, and, uh, and will it make something beautiful because it was faceted? Um, because I know how saleable they are and how, how much people are interested in them. So this particular opal, it weighs 22 carat and 20. Um, with 20 off, it's 28.40, so about $129 a carat. You know, for an opal that's really as fine as they get, it's it's quite an inexpensive stone per carat. Uh, here's, I guess I can show this now. Um, this this is uh, an opal that is crystal opal. You know, we cut quite a few crystal opals and, and really felt that they were going to hold up because a couple of them I had for uh, nearly a year and no crazing. But ultimately, like most crystal opal, particularly from Ethiopia, they started the craze. So we just cut this one and put it in a bottle, and uh, it's kind of a display piece. Um, you know, before I saw that they were cracking up, I bought this little baby, which is about a thousand carats, and uh, assuming I was going to facet a stone, and I thought I was going to hit the mother load with this, because of, you know to cut a 500 carat faceted opal, you know that would have brought uh, two three hundred dollars a carat, uh, putting that at three hundred fifteen thousand dollars or. Probably more than that. Probably could have been thirty, forty thousand dollars, but unfortunately, we assume that this is going to craze. So I'm still going to cut it, and we'll put it in a bottle, and it'll just be a pretty display piece because I think this one actually sold for us. Um, so collectors are still have an interest in it, and this will be a big, extraordinary piece. I don't know if we can. Where do we see the? color from this one I mean if you look inside I mean there's just lots of color in it so it'll it'll really cut a, a cool piece you know just have to cut it and bottle it and you know live with it like that and you know it'll just be a extraordinarily large crystal opal that you keep in a bottle and water and just appreciate it won't get 30 grand out of it maybe maybe three or four grand or maybe five I don't know you know as a specimen yeah I'm not sure whether to facet it or you know because this one in the bottle is is we'll show it on here Mike let's see what the, you can see the colors in it you know the bottle definitely helps the colors too but you can't really see the faceting you can kind of see it but you know, so whether I'll facet that one or cab it, I can probably get much better weight out of it as a cab, um, and it won't take me two days to do. Um, so we'll see what, what we're going to do with it. I wasn't going to do anything with it, just keep it as it is, but but uh, now that I see there's interest in bottled opals, I'll, I'll cut it and, and see if we can sell it. So it's one of our future shows, you'll see this piece um, as a opal in water and and hopefully it's a, a beautiful piece I, and I think it will be you know just a large extraordinary piece of opal yeah and up next is a tanzanite tanzanite is our specialty um, the uh, the tanzanite is well over half our business uh, this is a stone I cut. This is a Berrien style emerald cut. Just the, the Berrien style produces a really nice brilliance. I've cut them for years. Uh, back when I was uh, selling to jewelers, many of them knew me as Mr. Berrien because I cut so many Berriens. You know, it was new at the time. You know, this is back in the 1980s when <clears throat> there wasn't very many cutters in the U.S. and and cutting styles were pretty much as they were done in in Asia and um, <clears throat> so this was a new style and uh, I I liked it and got good at it and um, so I cut many many of them and I I still cut them today they cut any shape and you'll see a shield here later and some squares that are in Berrien styles it's just a style of cutting that. Uh, is named after, uh, well, Basil Watermeyer named it after him and his wife, Basil and Marion. So it's a Berrien. 
Uh, it's a brilliant style pavilion and a step cut crown. Uh, get that in focus. But you can see for an emerald cut, just just produces a really, really nice brilliance. You know, this particular stone weighs three carat eleven. Um, and the uh, the price on this one is eleven seventy six, and at three seventy eight a carat, it is very inexpensive. And this is the last time ever you'll see it at that price, because this material in three carat plus typically five hundred plus six hundred a carat. You know, so it is a very reasonably priced stone. You know, I bought the rough right, cut it, and uh, just a very nice stone for for a low price per carat. And our next stone is a, a chrome tourmaline. Uh, chrome is the coloring agent. Um, it colors this stone. Um, it's a deep color, so a little hard to picture here, but um, just a beautiful green. You know, this uh, much like Savorite garnet, uh, just at a much less expensive price than Savorite's. You know, Savorite garnet uh, in this size, over two carat, and in a, and in a garnet, because garnet's very dense, this would probably weigh three carat for this size, or two and a half. <clears throat> um, so this one's $1,190 as a regular price, and and nine fifty two. You know, the Savorite would be $3,500, or 3000 anyway, for a very comparable look. Um, both Savorite and Chrome Tourmaline uh, both come from Tanzania. Um, and, and this stone is just a really beautiful stone, VS Clarity, um, and uh, very inexpensive price per carat. Um, you're probably 450 a carat. Again, the, the Savorite garnets are 1,500 to 2,000 a carat. Then anything else similar would be emerald, which of course is 5,000, 10,000 a carat. Um, so it is the bargain of the chrome colored stones. Uh, we have a question, yeah. Jeff. Not really a question, but um, just okay. to follow up with this. Uh -huh. um, you know, for everybody out there, Steve sold me on this, the chrome tourmaline as well. Because remember, my wife wanted an emerald, huge emerald. And like you said, I think it was uh, <laughs> four or $5,000 for the size she wanted. Yeah. And um, even the, uh, the Savorite garnet was pretty expensive. But chrome tourmaline, beautiful. Wife loves it. Great yeah. stone. It, it, it's brighter than emerald typically, although we just sold an emerald that was a two carat for about 15 grand. And it was a beautiful stone, really one of the finest I've, I've ever had. But uh, it, they're just expensive for a very similar look to what you can get chrome tourmaline. Chrome tourmaline is one of my favorites. As I've said before, I don't like cutting them. Uh, I mostly buy them cut. That stone I didn't cut. Um, me and, and friends that are cutters, you know, we've all had bad experiences cutting chrome tourmalines. They just, no matter how good you think it is, it turns out too dark. It's almost black at times. Um, inclusions show up. You didn't see. It's just it's been a nightmare to cut. So I just buy them cut and where I can see everything about it, see that it's not too dark, see that it's clean. And, you know, so, but it's a, a stone well worth owning. You know, you can just get a big look for for not a lot of money, you know. And they don't come big. I think three or four carat, it's tough to get them larger than that because they just get so dark that they're black. And, and with that, um, Nicholas wants to know if, um, I don't know if he's talking about tourmaline or chrome tourmaline, but can you throw that into an ultrasonic cleaner? Um, I have, you know, but I've also seen chromes damaged. Although I, I think, you know, when it comes to uh, ultrasonic cleaner, most stones will withstand an ultrasonic cleaner, but there's always the rare one that just has stress or something that, that it breaks. You know, a lot of people have gotten a bad impression of the ultrasonic cleaner because in, for years, you would ultrasonic a stone, then you'd steam it, you know, and steam is the killer. I mean, st you don't steam almost anything in color. You know, you, you avoid it as much as possible. You know, there are stones, ruby and sapphire and um, 
you just you just avoid the steamer, but the ultrasonic typically is safe, but I say typically. You know, when I clean something, you know, we do tanzanites in the ultrasonic cleaner. Occasionally I've done 10, 15 carat stones, and I'm just very nervous about it. But sometimes there's no choice of getting something clean. You know, sometimes they're set in a way that they're, there's no way to get to the back of the stone. And if it's ever going to be pretty again, ultrasonic is almost the only way to clean them. So uh, one way to avoid issues is to use a less powerful ultrasonic, like the ones you can buy on Amazon for 100 bucks. I mean, they are ultrasonic cleaners. Um, they're just not as powerful, and you'll have less likelihood of damage. Um, but... Would I throw this chrome tourmaline in an ultrasonic cleaner? I would, but and and that's a big thing about ultrasonic cleaners too. They do, the longer you run them, they get hot, and you can see ultrasonic cleaners in a jeweler. They're just steaming, and again, it's that heat that is the problem. So you really want a cold ultrasonic, and again, this is what I do. But there's still risks. So, you know, I'm willing to take the risk. You have to decide whether you're willing to take the risk, put them in an ultrasonic. So, okay, excellent. Um, we had a question. Um, we just showed a tanzanite. Um, let me find where this is. So, um, Miriam, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I know we're going to be showing a few tanzanite tonight. Um, she's wanting, and I know. All of our tanzanites pretty well. It is very high grade, but are any of the tanzanites tonight investment grade? I guess she wants to know. Uh, all of them, and and I have a huge variety of investment grade tanzanite. Tanzanite, the quality that's available now is the best I've ever seen. And uh, right now, I just bought oh probably thirty stones that are just really, really top quality stones, including high quality cutting. I didn't cut them; very difficult to get rough because uh, of export issues. But uh, um, the material I've been getting of late, the cutters are really, really good. And occasionally, I look at it and I go, "Wow, I could have cut that." You know, it looks like the quality I'm doing. So they're using much higher precision equipment. You know, because even in Tanzania now, they're teaching on on uh, much better equipment than they've used in the past. You know, they're using American-made equipment and and uh, cutting to to uh, designs and and angles that we would use here. Whereas in the past, they used to just cut for weight retention and not worry about the polish so much. But cutting's getting better over there. Still, ninety percent of it's horrible. But uh, there are some great cutters. I have uh, good cutters both in Tanzania and India. And, uh, you know, what I've been buying lately, I, I don't buy it unless I consider it investment quality. You know, there's no need to. I mean, there's plenty of material right now, but that's not going to be forever. You know, and things I expected to change quickly. I thought things would change by now. But this uh, pandemic has made... Uh, the availability of tanzanite um, still available because nobody's traveling, nobody's going over there buying. Um, right now, they just want to market something. You know, the nature of, of selling stones in Africa is when business is tough, prices get great, um, which is much true of all marketing, but they're particularly susceptible to that. When there's not much material or, or the market is really good, prices just skyrocket. And uh, with the change in things going on there with the government, I had assumed by now prices would be up. But because of the pandemic, uh, it's kept prices down, and, and it's just a really good time to buy, if not for the prices, just the quality of the material that's available. You know, just very, very high quality. All right. You seem to be on a roll here. Let's do uh, one more question. One more question, okay. sure. Um, this may be one for later. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about it. A couple people asked um what do you think of the new machine so far the fasting machine? oh the yeah yes um i i just started cutting we did an unboxing and maybe that's why they're asking because we did an unboxing video uh, just this week and and uh i cut my first half a stone uh here it is on the dop it is a morganite and uh it went very well um 
I'm still learning the machine, so I'm not ready to teach on it. But um, so far, this has been great because the the reproducibility, if that's a word, um, must be a that sounds too long. Um, but that's key to a good machine, and the machine is right behind me here. Um, this is the Ultratech V5, um, and and it. You know, when I cut the facet and go back to polish it, it's dead on. No cheating. Um, you know, a couple of my machines are, are worn out enough that when you go to repolish, you have to do a little fine adjustment to get the facet right. And lower quality equipment, you have to do it all the time. You know, you just can't reproduce a facet. When you change the laps, you go from a cutting lap to a polishing lap and the machine just because you have slight changes in the height and and uh, um, changes in the lap itself you have to adjust the facets but so far this v5 you've had not had to do any uh, any uh, cheating on on the facets which is what I expected and and I'm happy to say that it's exactly what I got you know so I had no issues cutting my first stone even though I'm new to the machine it was easy to cut and and really cut a great stone and and by tomorrow I'll finish this stone and and we'll see what it looks like and I know it's going to be a great stone it just was the machine works works as advertised and and I'm very happy with it and as I learn it and get faster at using it um, I'm going to be very happy with it and then with the future of doing fantasy cutting with this machine I'm pretty excited about it so it's a it's an advance an, an advancement in my ability um, in cutting, which I haven't advanced in a long time. But being able to move into fantasy cutting is is pretty exciting, and and we'll see that probably later in the year. So yes, I'm happy. <laughs> so if, if you look at it here, I mean, this is the the angle. Um, the digital angle on here and, and it just makes it much easier. You know, I have a facet that had something similar, but this is even an advancement over that. And uh, this, this just makes it so um, you can cut a facet and you know that each similar facet, which in when you cut a stone, there can be 16 facets that are all cut the same, or there can be four or two. And when you get the one facet set, you can just go and, and cut the others without even looking, really, and, and they'll be right. So, so that's the advanced advancement of the uh, digital angle. Uh, digital angle. Is there, it's a DAD. So, but anyway. Yes, great machine, and look forward to showing you stones that are cut on it. I added the link to the description. To the machine. So if you're interested in buying the machine, we, we do represent them now, and, and uh, we will um, help you in, in choosing... Uh, the right machine for you because there's a couple of them available. This one is uh, 4950. This is their most expensive model. They've just produced a model um, to fit a, a lesser expensive market built to the same quality. Um, and, and also, uh, you can add the digital dial to it and um, or, or just use the analog dial. The analog dial is 3450 and adds another $500 to add the digital to it, which you can add later, you know. So it is a, a machine that gets you in at a little less money, but still can produce the kind of quality that, that Ultratech is known for. And our next stone is uh, a crystal. This comes to us from Mineral Mike. Uh, Mineral Mike is my son, of course, and and he does a, a full line of uh, natural crystals, which I think is sacrilege because I think these should all be cut up, <laughs> which is exactly the opposite of what mineral collectors think. They they think it's sacrilege for me to cut these crystals up, but this is where it all comes from, and um, this particular crystal. Uh, is a tricolor tourmaline 
Yes, Jeff. I'm just cutting in here. Make sure you talk very nicely about the stone because someone already bought it. Oh, really? Yep. Ah. Well, it is a great stone. You know, beautiful <laughs> termination on it. It's just a nice crystal. And getting tricolors is not the easiest thing. Um, you know, they uh, have been rare throughout time. You know, there was a time when uh, um, the... Uh, in California, they produced a lot of tricolors, you know, which which these days they're very low production. I haven't seen a, a stone from there in, in years. Himalaya. The Himalaya mine, yes. Thank you, Michael. Um, Michael really knows his minerals well. He's learning well, and he has a really nice, good, nice collection of, of minerals, and, and this was one of them. Sorry, nobody else can get it, but uh, it, it really a pretty stone, and... And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with it just as a specimen or, you know, you'll see these as a pendant. I think Michael wears one himself as a pendant. Um, I don't know. Where was this one from, Mike? Uh, Brazil. I don't know if it was Berrettes Salinas. Yeah, it says Salinas. Yeah. So it weighs 19.75 carat and no reason to talk about it anymore. Somebody owns it. So <laughs> <laughs> on to something we can sell you. Uh, next stone is from Brazil also. This is uh, really a rare stone. I mean, it's been... Yep. Sorry about that. Um, it's been a long time since I had uh, a pink topaz of this intensity. Um, the, the mine that this comes from in Brazil, um, it's just one mine in, in Minas Gerais. Um, and, and getting pink topaz with this kind of intensity is, is a very difficult thing. This came from a collection um, at, that the, uh, the gentleman retired and sold his entire collection out, and I bought several stones. You'll see two of them here tonight. Um, this particular topaz weighs 2.99 carat, um, and the, you know, the appraised price on it is 6080 and I'll tell you what uh, what these appraised prices, where we base this from. Uh, these come from the Gem Guide, uh, which is produced by Richard Drucker. Uh, this is a guide that is a market-driven guide uh, where they go to all the shows and they price stones from dealers, uh, particularly Tucson and some of the major gem gem shows. And they produce this guide for the for the wholesale market and appraisers because um, it's very difficult to know what the price of all these different stones are. And they go through a really wide variety of stones and, and break it down by, by quality and, and give us a price. So um, from that gem guide is, is how we get the appraised prices on our items. So... Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, if, if you want to purchase something, uh, you go to moregems.com, M-O-R-E-G-E-M-S.com, uh, click on the green bar at the top of the front page, and that'll take you to all the stones that you'll see tonight. Uh, and if you go over to the right, you can see all the other shows that we've done in the past. Uh, this particular stone, this topaz with 20 off is $2,717. And again, the original price price over six thousand um, dollars. So just a, a really nice pink topaz. You have a hard time finding a better pink topaz than this. Really good ring size would work as a pendant. Uh, just has a lot of brilliance to it, and and the pink is just a very desirable pink. You know, you don't see this kind of pink in in too many stones with this intensity. There you can get it in focus here. But that's just a really, really attractive pink. So th these pinks typically are heated from imperial topaz. And uh, to get a pink like this out of an imperial, you have to have a really intense color for imperial topaz and the imperials you know easily bring two to three thousand a carat in in really top quality material uh, 
and the next down, uh, let's see if I'm right. Yeah, this also came from the, the same gentleman from his collection. Um, this is a, a sapphire and just really an intense color. Really nicely cut, round, brilliant. Yep. So this one weighs 4.21 carats. Uh, praise value 69.90 uh, with 20 off. This stone is 28.72, which is 682 a carat, uh, which for a sapphire is a very low price particularly one with this kind of color. Yeah. Again, it's one of the finest I've ever owned. This would be from Sri Lanka. Um, pretty much the only place I've seen this kind of color intensity. Um, hey, Steve. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Jeff. <laughs> Another question. So, um, with the yellow sapphire, uh -huh. uh, I've got a question about um, what makes the color. Because there's blue sapphire, color changing sapphire, yellow what sapphire. What makes the color in yellow? Hmm. It's a good question. <laughs> 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 we'll try and find out. You know, a lot, a lot of the different colors. There's so many things that cause the color. It's it's hard to keep up on them. And, and for the amount of yellow sapphire you see, I, I'm not exactly sure um, what would be the cause of the color. If anybody out there thinks they know, uh, we'd be glad to hear. It uh, should be easy to find out what the, what the coloring agent of it is. Um, you know, in, in, uh, in blues, it can be titanium. Iron. Iron, then it could, yeah, that's what somebody's that's what Google says. That's what Google oh, says. Yeah, iron, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it depends who we're trusting. So, when iron is a coloring agent in a lot of things, so it definitely is a possibility that it's iron, but we'll try and, and find that out and and uh and let you know. You know, I, I'm have to say that I don't keep up totally on, on what the coloring agents are in stones. Um, I know a lot of them, but this, not this particular one. And don't ask me about the next stone because I don't know what colors it either. <laughs> <laughs> and, and sometimes it's a, some, sometimes it, it's um, a mineral. You know, often, you know, like in diamond, you know, nitrogen causes the yellow that's in diamond. Uh, blue causes a diamond to be, or boron causes a diamond to be blue. Uh, so different trace elements can cause it. Then we also have what's called color centers, which is kind of a, a hole in the in the lattice of of the the uh, atoms, and and it it also causes uh, differences in color in in stones. Um, so um, our next stone is peridot. Uh, this, this stone comes to, it's from Pakistan. Why, why are you smiling about Jeff? Uh, and, and they thought I was really smart, but you know, I don't know everything, but even though I told them I knew everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. um, uh, another quick question. Let's see if you can answer this one. Maybe zero for one tonight. <laughs> All right. Um, Nicholas recently heard uh, Topaz from Colorado fading in sunlight. Does this happen to all topaz? Well, that type of topaz. Yeah, not, not the pinks and, and the stuff from Brazil doesn't. Um, Guerrero topaz from Mexico. And yes, the material that you saw on prospectors from, from, uh, from Colorado. I don't know. All of it fades. I would guess that all of it will fade in sunlight. Um, but uh, not positive about that. But I know much of the material from Colorado fades and, and much of that type of color, you know, that also comes from, um, from uh, not from Russia, but uh, yeah, from, well, yeah, probably 
Afghanistan, Pakistan, th those type of crystals, they also fade. I've got one here that's colorless, you know, from having it near too much sunlight. So yeah, they don't handle sunlight well, but the material from Brazil, imperial topaz, has no problem fading. And, and the pink I showed you will not fade. Blue topaz will not fade, you know, even though it's, it's typically irradiated. And I assume the natural blues don't either, um, which we have a natural blue, which will be one of the big stones we'll be cutting on my new Ultratech here shortly. I have a 1,000 carat piece of rough uh, that will cut into two stones, probably a 300 carat natural blue topaz. Um, and to my knowledge, that does not fade either. So. so on to the next stone. This is a peridot. This is a big stone uh, for peridot. You know, it used to be I, I used to get very large stones. I cut a 77 carat once. Um, but this material from Pakistan has gotten very, very difficult to get. Um, used to be for you know, mid-90s it was discovered. And there was just large material, large quantity. Uh, but that's all changed, and, and the availability has become much more difficult. So getting stones this kind of size is, is uh, fairly difficult. Uh, this is a nice stone. It uh, weighs 9 carat 54. Uh, this stone, 4150 is the appraised price. 2100 is what we have it for online, and that puts us at uh, 1680 bucks. So this is an all step-cut stone. So the crown is step-cut, the pavilion is step-cut, uh, which is a cutting style that, uh, that I like to do because it gives good yield and um, just produces a very nice brilliance. Uh, up here. Well, can I? So nice, nice ring size. And next is an American sapphire. Uh, this comes to us from Montana. Uh, one day we'll get up there and go mining, which is an area that, that you all can go and go mining. Uh, there are quite a few places up there to, to uh, fee dig. Um, but this isn't one of them. This is from Rock Creek. Uh, no fee, dig fee digging here to my knowledge. Uh, Montana has some unique colors, a um, little different than. Uh, sure. If I can get the angle and the focus right. There you go. So they produce really pretty sapphires. You know, they don't have the top, top blues like you'd get out of Burma um, or out of uh, Sri Lanka or Madagascar. Uh, they're often a little steely blue like this, but this color has become very, very popular. Uh, there's spinels, this color, that are the hottest things on the market, and, and they're even grayer. They're called gray spinels, and they're just as hot as can be. You know, don't quite understand it. I'd much rather have a much bluer stone like this. So nice hard stone, you know, this is a good wearable stone that they put in a ring and you can put it in the ultrasonic. You can even steam this one, you know, but, uh, you know, this particular stone weighs a carat 63, uh, appraised value of 2350, 1390 is, is what it's online. And, and with our 20 off, uh, this Montana Sapphire would be 1112 bucks. Yeah. So pretty stone, and, and, you know, the popularity of Montana these days is, has been much more dramatic than in the past. People are looking at all the unusual colors because they produce a wide variety of colors up there, you know, in the pinks and, and uh, just 
every color that you can imagine, you know, some unusual looking, unusual looking stones and some beautiful stones. Uh, question, Jeff. Yes. Um, so with this, you talked about some fee digging. Um, can you name off some places, you know, we got a lot of people here around the U.S. and across the world, but in the U.S., maybe um, looking at the four corners, anywhere people can fee dig in the west, northeast. Well, as we mentioned, Montana, um, Oregon, we've been for um, sunstone, uh, which is fun, and you'll find some really nice material up there. Um, Nevada for opal um, and we did uh, we got some of this pink opal while we were up in Oregon uh, this is a relatively new discovery I think the mine is the pink lady mine so I haven't cut any of this yet um, if you get any you have to be a little careful cutting it wear a mask because there's mercury in it uh, but it's a, a really pretty pink color. Let's see if I can. Can I have the other screen there, Mike? So this is from Oregon. You know, and there's places in California, I think maybe even the Himalaya mine that produces, used to produce the uh, tricolor tourmalines, I think they have some fee dig mining there. And there, while we were out in uh, California, there was a new discovery of some amethyst that you could fee dig. But I, I think there was an issue there. If you got anything really good, they'd keep it. So, <laughs> which is no fun. In Georgia, and uh, oh, Georgia has amethyst. And for just fun, uh, mining quartz in Arkansas. You know, there's one place that you're going to find lots of quartz, you know. So if you want to take the kids or, you know, you just want to go yourself, uh, we had great fun there. And, and you know, every five minutes you're finding a, a nice uh, crystal cluster. And um, so it, it is an interesting place to go. <clears throat> Plus, within an hour, you can go diamond mining at the only diamond mine in the U.S., uh, both in, in Arkansas. So. And there's probably many, many others, um, you know, that you can go to. There's a lot in Arizona. There's, there's all sorts of, of digs in Arizona. Uh, and in most states, Indiana, I think we're pretty devoid of. We got, we got crinoids, and we, you know. Uh, that's Illinois, the Tully monster. Yeah, uh, out by Coal City, there's. Uh, a lot of fossils, most of it not accessible anymore, but I, I think you can still find some things out there. So, um, so with some of these places you can go digging, if someone's getting into cutting, is there a best place to find rough? Would it be to go to these places, or where should they Well, start? the only place, Oregon, where we went, Sunstone. You know, there's not a lot of places you're going to find cuttable rough. You know, most things you're going to find are specimens, and um, but but high quality cuttable material is pretty limited. You know, the opal that was in Nevada. You know, there is cuttable material there, but again, it's like we talked about. It goes in a jar because it, it just will not hold up to drying. As it dries out, it just cracks. So you have to keep it in a jar. But you you can cut that material. You got to be quick because it it cracks pretty quick. You know, and, and uh, the sapphires in Montana, you know, otherwise, you know, you want to be a cutter, you, you buy the rough from, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of new rough dealers in the U.S. And, and some very good quality rough dealers and a lot of nice material available. So those that are interested in cutting for hobby or for business, it's a good time right now because there's uh, more material available. There's more suppliers here in the U.S. that you can buy from. Um, so you can actually find some material that you can really make money at cutting. So, uh, what's next, there, Mike? Okay, this this is a really really nice oval. Uh, weighs seventeen point twenty carats, and they don't come much better than this. I don't care where you get it. 
Australians be envious because this is really a beautiful stone. Again, it's from Ethiopia, but just look at the colors. Yeah. In my time in buying Australian material, I don't think I bought a better stone than this. That's pretty vivid color across the entire gem. Get it in focus here. You know, and these are clean front to back. There's a little, little uh, divot there in the back, but no effect on the front. So this one, again, weighs 17.20 carats. 5,100 is the appraised price on it. Uh, 25.50 less 20% uh, puts it at 2,040. So for a top opal, you know, you're looking at 130 a carat, somewhere in that range. So just make a, a really nice pendant. It's a good size stone. One of those that uh, people are just going to remark on it constantly. You know, safest in a pendant, but we still, we mount them in rings, but you're much safer in a pendant because these are hydrophane. They do absorb um, oils and, and uh, things you may run into, so you want to avoid that as much as possible. Um, keep them uh, away from oils, and when we mount them, we try and put them away from the skin you know, some people want their stones to touch their skin, but this one you probably shouldn't. You know, you keep it away. We often put a, a backing behind the opal just to keep the skin oils away from it. Whether they affect it or not, uh, not sure. Depends how oily your skin are or if you're putting perfumes on or or uh, lotions. And, and these are things you want to avoid with these opals. Otherwise, they're very, very tough. The toughest opal of any source uh, these from Wilu, Ethiopia. Question? Yes. So we've sold a lot of these over the weeks, a lot of different stones. When someone does purchase it, um, you know, we pack it up, ship it out. Do What kind of information do we provide with the stone? Well, we give a full appraisal. Um, we appraise each stone. Uh, most of the information is, will be what is online, but we put the appraised price on it, uh, so it's good for insurance if you insure them. And um, but that's that's the primary information. Uh, people want a certificate of authenticity, but really those mean nothing. They're not a legal piece of paper. Whereas the appraisal we provide is a legal instrument. Um, that if it's not what we say it is, it can be used in court against us. And, you know, of course, that'll never be a problem. But, um, you know, it, it is your best protection for knowing you got what you were told is a full appraisal on, on a stone. So speaking about that and, and purchasing these, you know, we do... Um, have several ways of making payments, of course, credit cards, uh, glad to take a check, uh, cash, um, you know, online we have uh, financing also. What, how does the financing work? Do you it's know? Uh, via Sezzle, which is a very popular it's, financing program. And it, it, how is that set up? I believe you can pay, um, we have a new one coming soon as well. Um, the, there are some limitations, like the, the maximum amount you can use with Sezzle. But you pay, I believe, every two weeks. Um, the next one we will have, I think, is a longer amount of time. And it actually goes up to, I think, $10,000. Okay. And we also have PayPal. Yes. And uh, we will set up a layaway for those that would like to. You know, you'd have to call tomorrow and, and set up a layaway on something. But we go up to six months with regular payments. So um, no interest or anything. Just... Uh, you know, we'll hold it for that time, and once you paid it off, we send it out to you. And uh, next down is another mineral mic. Uh, this is an opal. Um, I'm not sure. You don't call these a crystal because they have no crystal shape. They're amorphous. Uh, but this is a specimen, and this is as a specimen. It's not cuttable. 
Um, it's got enough issues in it that you can't cut it, but it really is a beautiful opal. I mean, something that, that's well worthy of, of uh, having as a specimen for those collectors out there. Just full of color throughout. Uh, I don't know if I... So there you go. I mean, it's, it's crazy color. If it was cuttable, you wouldn't be seeing it because I'd have cut it. Yeah, because those colors are just mind-blowing. And pretty solid piece as far as pretty much opal throughout. You can see color in the back and... You know, but that's that's as good as the color gets from material from Ethiopia or any source. So I, um, I have the information on this one, Mike. Oh, okay. So six ninety nine, and that's twenty off that too, right? Yeah, twenty off that. Uh, so a little over five hundred bucks for an opal that weighs fifty eight carat. So for the collectors out there, really, really a nice specimen. And it's uh, from Mineral Mike, uh, mineralmike.com. Uh, you'll find uh, faceting opal. He has uh, some nice faceting grade opal. Um, when I run out of material to cut, you'll have to beat me to it because we selected it together and it's really nice quality material. So uh, for those uh, cabbers or faceters, you know, take a look at Mike's, uh, Mineral Mike's collection of opal and, and really a wide variety of mineral specimens. Uh, next on up is a sapphire. Uh, this is from my last trip to Madagascar. I bought quite a bit of material. Uh, this particular sapphire comes from Ilakaka, uh, which is in the middle south of uh, Madagascar. It was a discovery from the late 1990s, 1997, I believe. Uh, I traveled there from 2000 to 2008, um, and and after shortly after that, the production of sapphire uh, dwindled quite a bit. There are new sources producing in Madagascar. Lakaka still produces, but um, not the kind of quanti quantity it used to. So this is a, a really nice pink. These are this is a natural pink. Um, most pink sapphires have been heated, but this is a natural, uh, weighs a carat 12, uh, praise value of 5180. I mean, pink sapphire does appraise very high, um, but uh, this source um, just produced some very, very fine sapphires at, at uh, really good prices because when this was found, the whole world of sapphires changed. Uh, the pricing structure of sapphire dropped dramatically, um, but now with the disappearance of the availability of material, it's, it's up dramatically. Um, so this particular stone that appraises at fifty-one eighty, uh, we had priced at sixteen eighty, and twenty percent off that puts it at thirteen forty-four. Uh, this is a mixed uh, mixed cut, meaning. Uh, one side is, uh, whoops, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so the crown on this is step cut and the pavilion is brilliant, uh, whereas most sapphires, it's the opposite. Uh, typically the crown would be brilliant cut and, and the pavilion would be some kind of step or Portuguese cut. Uh, but this one I cut and, and it's really a, a beautiful stone, nice clean stone and, and being natural is why it gets such a high, high appraised value. Uh, because natural colors um, in sapphire, uh, it typically doubles, um, yeah, 50% that doubles the price of, of the value of, of sapphires. And up next is uh, one of our favorites, which is Blue Zircon. Um, one of my favorites because it's so darn saleable. You know, it's just a, a color that's a little different because you got uh, a beautiful, intense 
blue color like an aquamarine on steroids but add that little bit of green to it that it makes it a unique looking stone um, plus blue zircon has a very high refractive index refractive index is what determines brilliance and at 181 um, the refractive index number in colored stones it's one of the highest of all the colored stones so this produces a, a great amount of brilliance gives you a diamond like brilliance diamond has still a higher refractive index but for colored stones this is about as high a refractive index as we get uh, this particular blue zircon which comes from cambodia um, now known as Campuchia. Um, gone back to the old name i assume is what that was uh, as many countries have um, gone back to some of the old names that uh, a lot of the British had changed in the past when they ruled in these countries they changed names and now the the people are going back to their old names whether that's exactly what happened in Cambodia I'm just assuming um, but this is a really pretty stone um, you know it's this color is showing up a little more intense than, than what it is. looks more like a sapphire in this picture. Um, very difficult to photograph this color, but for a blue zircon, it is as intense as the color gets. You know, the picture on the screen is much more accurate, although it's still not perfect. Um, but, but really a beautiful stone. Um, praise value of $1,570. Uh, our price was 820 so that takes it down to 656 bucks, about $168 a carat. Uh, Blue Zircon's a good hard stone. Um, you, can, you can pretty much wear it in a ring, wear it in a pendant. Uh, good durability. Um, so you can kind of see the intensity of the color. Blue Zircon, typically lighter, you know, but even in its lighter color, it's still a really beautiful stone because of that extreme brilliance. Question there, Jeff. Blue Zircon matches your shirt tonight. <laughs> Thanks. I wore it special. <laughs> it's a compliment. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so we have <clears throat> this is maybe a more of a advice from uh, from you, Steve. So um, thought I was getting some advice. Uh, no, oh, okay. not yet. That's uh, so I keep finding myself cutting cutting stones to the flaws and leaving very little stone to play with um, when trying to maximize the size of the gem. But it's taking a lot more time. Uh, I just can't seem to make myself cut it just a little bit smaller and not deal with a flaw or pavilion with a tip that I have to fight for. You ever run into these problems? Um, didn't quite get it. So this is about inclusions and the problem with cutting with inclusions. Yeah, it looks like he's... He's cutting to the flaws and leaving very little stone left to play with. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and it, it's buying rough and just trying to buy things that aren't included. You know, you, uh, there are many stones I have that inc have inclusions in them. And you mentioned the pavilion. you got to keep inclusions out of the pavilion. So you have to orient it. You know, you really got to look close at the stone before you start cutting. Use immersion fluids to see where the inclusions like uh, wintergreen oil is one you can put on the stone and you'll see the inclusions easier because um, placing them is key to it um, and you ideally you buy a stone that's totally clean to start with and you don't have to deal with that but but uh, we all struggle with that all the time so inclusions need to be placed away from the pavilion they need to be vertical whenever possible showing not vertical meaning when the stone is I mean if this were a stone you want the the inclusion 
vertical like this and it'll show up much less but inclusions are a pain for everybody and we all lose a lot of weight trying to to get rid of them but the key for inclusions to start with is looking very close and orienting the material best to avoid the inclusions or getting them into a position that that they don't show as much um, I find myself kicking myself because I didn't look closer and I didn't see that inclusion that I could have reoriented the piece a little bit to to have that inclusion be less of a problem um, but ideally you buy things that are clean but that's not always possible so we all have difficulties with inclusions but uh, I don't know if we've dealt with some of those problems and immersions in some of our videos on YouTube uh, look through our videos and and if I haven't we'll probably work more on that the next set of cutting videos would do um, but I'm sure we've we've gone over that a little bit in some of our videos it's yeah. a problem for everybody you know just be more careful buying the rough and more careful before you even dot the stone up to cut okay so. and, th and this may tie into another question um i think a gentleman earlier wanted to know if he wants to start say cutting tanzanite what to look for in rough or how to choose the best rough for cutting tanzanite. well it, it's just hard to get any rough you know because it's it's generally banned from export although material still gets out you know it's uh it's going to be the most difficult stone you're gonna have to choose rough um, and talking about inclusions, if you leave inclusions in them and you got to heat it, then you got risks there too because many, many inclusions will fracture during heating. Um, so tanzanite is a challenging stone to buy. Um, you know, there, there are so many colors that are beautiful that you, you know, generally the, the finer colors, the rough is deeper color. Um, but even the light ones can be cut very beautiful stones, but just hard to get rough in tanzanite. You know, I sure wouldn't try and specialize it if you're not going to be traveling because you're just going to have a hard time finding rough to cut. So. Uh, before I get on to the next stone, one thing that I did want to talk about tonight is the issue of synthetic diamond. Um, I've kind of avoided it as most jewelers avoid it. It's a kind of a negative thing, but we've come into a situation that, that now synthetic diamond has become much cheaper than natural diamond. Um, so it's going to be a problem um, with when you're buying from people you don't know or trust um, because the real issue is you can't identify it and in totality, I can't identify it. Um, the problem right now is synthetic diamond is just like a real diamond, and the testing equipment is not caught up with the synthetics. Uh, the testing equipment, uh, because there's, there's basically two types of diamonds we're looking for, type one and type two. Um, if it's type one diamond, you know, generally it's, it's a natural stone and there is equipment that can tell us if it's type one or type two. Uh, the problem with type two is 2% 2 of natural diamonds are type two and all the synthetics are type two. So even the testing equipment we have just tells us to refer to a lab and have it tested more. So currently we can't totally identify the synthetics that are out there. You know, some people on larger stones are actually putting dopants in it that you can, you can identify or they're marking them. But the unscrupulous are going to be um, passing off synthetics as natural and you have no chance in identifying them yourself. Um, particularly where the real problem will be is the small diamonds that are in jewelry. So if you're buying on eBay, good luck, because the little diamonds will be on, you will not be able to identify them. And the price difference is one-third a natural milli. You know, these are stones under 15 points, all the stuff that's in the mounting. All those stones... Um, 
the synthetics are worth a third of what the natural is. So there is a big benefit to the cheats out there of making a piece. It's going to look like the real thing. And, you know, they don't have to tell you because you're not going to be able to identify it for, you know, until we get equipment that easily separates these, uh, you're going to easily be taken. So you, it's really a, a trust issue. You know, we have to be careful. Um, we don't generally deal in synthetics because you have fear of mixing them up in in uh, your stock and, and how do you separate them, you know. So it, it is currently a problem. It's a problem that will change because we always end up getting testing equipment eventually that will separate these. But right now it's a, a real issue in the business. So don't be thinking you're going on eBay and buying this big diamond bracelet that, oh, man, it's really, really cheap because it's probably going to be synthetic diamonds because they are really, really cheap. So just a warning out there and uh, be careful and trust who you buy from. Yeah. Uh, I don't quite have that question. So synthetic diamonds, is that the same as like lab grown? Yeah. Would it be considered? And just getting better yes. at it? Or? Well, you know, we've had lab grown diamonds since 1953. GE produced the first diamonds back, way back then. But it only became an issue when synthetic diamonds got cheaper than natural. And that's only been the last couple of years. You know, so up to that time, it was more expensive to make a diamond than to mine a diamond. So it, it was no problem. But now it's much cheaper to make a synthetic diamond than it is to mine a diamond. So there, there's where the problem is. So on to the next stone and, and better good news. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one, uh, again, uh, a third stone that's from this collection uh, that I bought from um, uh, the gentleman that was retiring. And th this is, he just had really, really good taste because the intensity of this pink is like second to none. I mean, I've only had one other stone with this kind of intensity of pink in all my time in business. It also came from Sri Lanka. I bought it in in, uh, in Bangkok from a Sri Lankan dealer, and it had this kind of intense color. It was a little bigger, but, you know, finding this color is really, really difficult. You know, it's a fuchsia almost, and, you know, this would make a remarkable engagement ring for somebody. So this picture, it doesn't really do justice to how intense the color is. I mean, it's intense here, but it's just got a, a more of a fuchsia color like you see in the video will be more accurate than, than what this is. But it's really, really a remarkable stone. Uh, that's, that's accurate for its color, you know, which is extraordinary. Again, it's from Sri Lanka, weighs a carat seven, uh, praise value of 6330 our price online was 2090 and that'll put it at uh, 1672 I believe yes so but just an extraordinary color and brilliant you know well cut stone just very bright and and quite the color Uh, next stone is uh, another faceted opal. Like I said I've been into faceting opal these days. And another one with just amazing colors. And the opal from Ethiopia, I mean, uh, they're, they're just... It's so thick and, and colors just throughout the piece. You know, you can't turn this in a direction that just doesn't show some beautiful color. Uh, this particular opal does weigh 20.20 20 carats, uh, appraisal of 4,040, 2,600 online, and 20 off that will be uh, $2,080. So about $102 a carat, you know, for just one of the finest opals on the planet. These are kind of fun to cut because you don't have to get too elaborate in the cutting. Uh, there's no real advantage to, um, 
to putting too much effort into putting too many facets or or putting some unique faceting on it um, so they're pretty easy to cut fairly easy to polish um, so I, I do like faceting them even though it takes three or four times as long to facet them as it does to cut a cabochon because a cab this size I could do in an hour and this is probably four or five hours to cut this stone. But still, it's just such a, a unique look. Um, and again, people like it, so I'm here to please. And I think that stone's pretty pleasing. Great pendant, uh, big ring, but still could go as a ring. But again, safer as a pendant. Uh, we like to put them in pendants. Uh, you'll get lots of compliments on them and that's the one thing I've I've been told by many many people that uh, that wear our pendants is they just constantly getting comments on it you know and it's partly because of the size and and just extraordinary beauty of these stones you know Ethiopia hopefully will keep producing for some time um, I would like to get over there to Ethiopia I haven't been there yet they're having some issues there in the country right now uh, hopefully it doesn't affect the supply of of the opal but um, just very pleased with the quality of the material and um, i will continue to to deal in in this stone can you show us the size sure just Yeah, it's, it's a nice pendant size. <clears throat> and our next stone uh, is morganite. Uh, we've talked about morganite several times because I've cut quite a few of them recently. Uh, this is again from Ethiopia where the opals are from. Uh, new source for... Uh, for morganite. So this material is natural color. Uh, many of the stones, as we talked about before, are irradiated because much of it comes from Mozambique and that material is enhanced by irradiation. Uh, the color didn't start out like this, but the irradiation caused the change. <clears throat> but these came out of the ground, this color. Um, and these were nice big stones and uh, one time by and haven't seen them since. You know, there's uh, issues in the south of Ethiopia uh, these are found where the emeralds that are coming from Ethiopia are also found. Um, but this is just a, a beautifully brilliant stone. I cut this in, a, again, a Berrien-style square, or square Berrien. And big stone. You know, it's probably the only reason I still have it. If this was a 4-carat stone, it'd sell quickly. But 33-carat uh, morganite's a pretty big stone. Uh, this stone uh, appraises, let's see if I can get it in the screen here. You know, it's kind of peachy pink, which which I find is the most desirable color for most people. Uh, this material uh, from Nigeria, where this comes from also, much of it is is mostly pink. You know, but the, the market I'm finding is generally for this peachy pink color. So this stone, 6140 appraised price, uh, I think what, 20 off. This stone is $3,112, so $94 a carat, which for morganite is very, very inexpensive. That's typically what it costs me to buy morganites. Nice clean stone, bright, just really a, an attractive color. Always been one of my favorite colors, peach colors. Garnets come this color, Podbrasha Sapphire, which is exceedingly expensive. This would be a million dollar Podbrasha Sapphire. But good Brightstone, named after J.P. Morgan, the financier. I uh, probably mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. Uh, Kunz, who was the gemologist for Tiffany and Company, promised J.P. Morgan, who I bought a ton of stuff from him that he'd name a stone after him. And and uh, Kunzite came out, and Kunz, of course, named it after himself, leaving J.P. Morgan out. So fortunately, another stone was found. I think it was found in California. 
Um, and we called it, or he called it, Morganite, uh, which I'm sure made J.P. Morgan very happy, and he probably bought quite a few of them. Question, Jeffrey. I know we talked about uh, the ultrasonic and steam earlier, but um, with Morganite, um, a woman wants to know how to best clean it. Uh, home, ultrasonic or works. Ultrasonic. Yeah, it, they'll be safe in an ultrasonic. You know, aquas, you know, the only the only barrel you probably couldn't put in the ultrasonic is emerald. And that's because typically they're enhanced by filling, uh, which used to be oil, now is epoxy. So those are even probably safe in the ultrasonic and not recommending ever to put emerald in an ultrasonic. Uh, they have enough fractures in them that there could be internal stress, you know, but a clean barrel, including uh, morganite, aquamarine, uh, Heliodor, Goshenite, uh, those as clean stones should should be safe in the ultrasonic. Again, a cold ultrasonic, not a hot ultrasonic, but that would be the best way to clean them. And, and these stones you really need to keep clean uh, because low refractive index doesn't hold up to dirt and grease as well as a high refractive index stone. A diamond you can get away with not cleaning it for much longer than a morganite. Morganite you get grease and stuff on the back and it just kills the brilliance. So you do need to keep them clean. Uh, our next stone is a tanzanite. And it's a really great color in this stone. I mean, if you want a sapphire blue looking tanzanite, this would be the stone for you. This is primarily blue, has a little violet to it, but um, a very blue stone. Uh, weighs 4.44 carat. Uh, four is my lucky number. I should own this stone. Um, 44.44 is the appraised price. Uh, 25.40. Uh, our regular price, and uh, tonight with 20 off, with the coupon code BEST20, uh, it would be 2032 or $457 a carat. Uh, tough to beat that price on this kind of stone. Um, just a, it, It's a violet blue exceptional would be the, the quality of this stone, and it uh, has an overall quality rating, which Tanzanite, we do. In bigger stones, we do give them a grading, a new grading system that we've developed and we use on all our bigger tanzanites. This would be 911 out of a out of a a thousand. So a, a good high rated stone, putting it into the uh, blue violet, exceptional quality uh, material. So this is uh, antique cushion. Um, is is the the shape of the cut, and it has a, a Portuguese style pavilion and a, a brilliant style crown. So on these tanzanites on our website, rarely do we discount tanzanite. You know we're very competitive with with all other websites. You know, we do buy from the source, and so this is 20% off it is more than we can almost ever do. Beautiful stone, really nice cutting on it. You show that on there. Here or there? Sure. Where? Here. Here? Yeah. <laughs> Where? little claws. So it's a good size stone. You know, make a very nice ring. You know, a lot of people don't recommend them in rings, but we make them all the time with, with little problem. Um, you assume after 10 years, maybe we have to repolish the crown of the stone a little bit, but uh, we do that here. And um, so, you know, we don't hesitate to put these in rings. And up next is a, another Sveen. Um, we like Sveen, another very saleable stone, and, you know, just has that remarkable brilliance and dispersion. You know, those two qualities, you put them together, 
Gee, I thought I disconnected that phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Somebody call them. They want this theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they probably wanted to place a big order. I just hung up on them. Oh, well. <laughs> They'll call back. Um, so <laughs> you got a close-up on that, Michael? But that that's just a cool rock. You know, this one actually comes from a, a new source in Zimbabwe. Boy, they really want, really want to talk to us. Okay. okay. Uh, so this is a, a nice brown brilliant, uh, weighs uh, 2.45 carat, you know, and you can see the amount of dispersion and it's just amazing. You know, it, it's remarkable, we've talked about it before, is, you know, one source plays out, which would be Madagascar. And uh, all of a sudden, a new source is found, in this case, Zimbabwe. And it's only been the last year and a half or so that we've seen material out of here. A little different color, but, man, the dispersion is there. And, and this is such a pretty stone. Make a great pendant. Again, not a ring stone, but would be a, a great center stone as a pendant. Uh, with 20 off this stone, uh, we're looking at $416, weighs 2.45 carats. Really a beauty. Uh, question, Jeff. I'll put you on the spot here. No, uh -oh. um, I'm one a, for two. <laughs> so, well, this is more. We had a question. Um, there was one person that messaged in. Um, she's kind of worried with uh, the pandemic and everything. Uh huh. Um, because we do shows like this, she was wondering if we ever do any virtual like meetings to, you know, for example, she was interested in Morganite, uh -huh. but um, have we ever thought, and it's kind of a good idea, but thought about doing like a, kind of virtual. Like a sales? Almost like a sales meeting, but online. I don't I'm know. Guessing through like hangouts or. How, uh, how do you do that? Yeah, it would be, I suppose we're capable. We could, yeah. Um, we'll look into that. Yeah. But, it, you know, it, it, and if you're local and you come into the store, we require masks. We all wear a mask. We require a mask. And, and we're careful with the uh, sanitation of everything. So any of you that are local and afraid to go in places, as I am, I mean, I, I fear going into places and avoid going into places if people aren't wearing masks. So on our door, it says you have to have masks. We provide masks. Uh, we require people to wear masks here in the store. So so it's relatively safe, as safe as you can be to come in here. We're not a busy store. So, you know, you may be in here with one other customer typically would be the most. And um, so we try and protect you. But, but it's a consideration, you know, and if this goes on much longer, it's something, you know, and it's a reason for what we're doing now. And uh, it is something we we could look into and um yeah we're yeah it, it's a good idea so we'll we'll consider that and um have it available it, i mean it, it makes sense so thanks thanks for the question that was the sound of a sale hopefully it was something uh Could have been, could have been this. I don't know what it was. Anyway. There we go. <laughs> Do we have a little sale? Uh, uh -oh. Oh. Does anybody know what it was? <laughs> oh, you do. I'm just waiting for the little sale logo to come up. Ah, here. okay. Thank you. Sold. All right. So, um, we had a lot of stones you already talked about, so I. I, really I saw the price. So was it the Sphine? It wasn't the Sphine. This person said they've been trying to call. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> hung up on them twice, and they still hung in there. <laughs> uh, no, this was the uh, Barian style emerald cut tanzanite. Oh I, oh, I guess I didn't look at the. Oh, okay, cool. Yes. So right. thank you. Thank, yeah, thank you. You know, you love the stone. 
It's a it's really well cut, if I say so myself, and just has nice brilliance and going to make a beautiful ring or pendant, whatever you decide to do with it. Thanks. And the next one is another tanzanite. So if you'd like to buy two tonight, you could have a ring and a pendant. So this is a eight carat sixty. Uh, this one I cut into a Barian style again. You can see this is a step cut crown you're seeing there in the picture, and and the uh, pavilion is is a brilliant style. So this is a Barian style shield cut. You know, and and you do this cut to maximize yield out of the piece of rough. So once I preformed it, it's kind of the shape it had, and and I can do a burying style for pretty much any shape. And they typically work with with just great brilliance, uh, as you can see in this stone. this in focus yeah little schmutz on the little needs to be cleaned off but but a re really pretty stone uh, praise value on this one is 9750 online 5590 and with 20 off it's 4470 so 520 bucks a carat and and typically 600 650 is about as low as as this size stone would go but tonight with 25 off again it's uh, 4470 bucks nobody gonna mention jeffrey's sailboat <laughs> it's a sail shape huh yes, could be you want us to make this into a sailboat pendant we can do that looks like a what taco what and somebody mentioned it being a taco before a or taco <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay i had tacos tonight they didn't look like that <laughs> every time you look at a taco now you're gonna think it's yeah, thanks for that comment jeff we may not have Jeff back next time. <laughs> <laughs> if that happens, expect the show to be about 20 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, remember, shop us on... Have you got any other questions? Uh, any other... Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I guess we have some questions. Yeah, we well, got a few. You guys got to warn me before okay. you stop the show. So, well, I guess everybody out there, if you do have questions, please send them in now. Um, one, we had a um, question, if you've ever faceted a red barrel. Uh, maybe one. But it, it's interesting. Red barrel comes from uh, Wawa, the Wawa Mountains in Utah. And back in 1981, the owner of the mine was in a booth across from me in Tucson. And uh, we were there for two weeks together. So he wanted me to come mine for him because he was getting up there in age. And, and if he didn't mine, he would lose his rights to it because I think it was, it was state uh, or federal land. Um, but, of course, I had a family and probably had Jeffrey probably kept me from mining because he was a little baby and he, uh, we couldn't move to Utah. Um, but I had a chance to, to mine the red barrel, you know, and, and uh, which would have been really cool, but, but it didn't happen. And, and I, I think I've only cut one small stone from there. You know, it's, it's like cutting morganite or, um, you know, so it's relatively easy to cut, assuming it's clean. You know, although getting material right now is is almost impossible, and um, and it's very very expensive. You know, probably as expensive as emerald. So, so I'm the reason you don't have a huge collection of red barrel, huh? You're the reason. Yep. Let's see. That would have been eighty-one. You would have been two. Seventy-nine. Two. You'd yeah. been two years old. So he's the reason I'm not the 
Red Barrel King. <laughs> Um, question, um, you showed some pink opal earlier. Uh-huh. You plan on cutting that anytime soon? Or? Um, you know, I've got a lot of cabochon material that I haven't got to because I've been cutting things that are worth a lot more money. So that's always the issue. You know, if I had a design that they go into, um, I should cut some because I've had it how long since we were there? Pushing on two years now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... One of these days, you know, but I have lots of other opal to cut that are probably more valuable. So that's that's always been the issue, you know, and I, I did mention that there's mercury in it. So anybody that cuts it, you have to wear a mask. And um, but but other than that, it looks like a, a really a beautiful pink color, as nice as I've seen in, in pink opal, which there has been other sources of pink opal. But uh, this looks to be a good one and relatively new in Oregon. So maybe this year I'll cut a pink opal. <laughs> I'll try and get to it. Um, one gentleman kind of talked about, um, I know you have these issues. Um, you have a lot of attachment issues. So <laughs> Let's don't talk about my issues, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, he's been fasting for about uh, over a year now, and he wants to know how, um, when you cut stones, how you're able to lose the attachment to what you've, created and sell to uh you know and then end up selling them well i i've never had that attachment um because you get that attachment you're in trouble you know until recently there have been stones that that i've kept although i've had a few that eventually i let them go um, because it's a bad attachment to get because you start wanting everything um and you're not going to make any money you do that so i just assume there's always another one you know some things like uh there's a a tanzanite i have right now 29 karat natural color that it was back in the early 90s that the last one i had that looked anything like it so i kind of have an attachment to that i don't want to sell it but again for the right money i'd i'd probably sell it on the assumption that there's going to be another one you know, or something else that, that I'd like to get attached to. So um, attachment is good for you people out there. It's bad for me. All right. And then I guess, um, so the, the deals that we have tonight, how, how long are they good for? And well, I put them for two weeks till the next show. Okay. So yeah, we're doing be, a show they'll be good weeks. till the next shows, which is going to be two weeks. You know, we're kind of running at two weeks right now. We were trying to do a show every week, but uh, we're back in business now, and and it's so busy that, uh, you know, I've got cutting to do, and um, so it's hard to get these shows together because it takes a good full day um, to to get a show together and sometimes even more than that. So, so we're going to be every two weeks now. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Oh, it's good for two weeks. Yeah, till the next show, you know. So it'll it'll be up and just uh, click on the green bar and and uh, that's where you'll find all the stones uh, from this week. So so hopefully uh, some of you find an interest. There are some great stones here. I mean, these are really as as good as they get. The things we've shown you tonight and and uh, worthy stones to own. So so all right, folks. Remember, uh, you have any more questions, Jeff? Nope. Before I. Uh, Okay, shop us online at moregems.com as well as subscribe to us on YouTube at More Gems. Uh, that's going to do it for us today. I really want to thank everybody for, for joining us. Uh, sign up for alerts for when we go live. Uh, also check out the video links and info at the bottom of this stream. Until next time, I'm Steve Moriarty. Keep on gemming. Thank you.